Okay, this one is a continuation of my series on the anticipator in, uh, and cycles per hour of furnaces. Remember, the cycles per hour is determined only by the thermostat, nothing else. That's, that's what determines the cycles per hour. Let's consider heat pumps and how many cycles per hour a heat pump should should be set at. Now originally, and I don't know how many of these things I saw, they set those things at six cycles per hour. That means that thing run for, it ran, you know, there's six, ten minutes in an hour. It went through a complete cycle in less than ten minutes and then was on again. Okay, heat pumps take a few minutes just to get up to efficiency. They can be up to five minutes. Most of them are about two or three. I did a video on that. I should see if I can uh, I'll refer to you to that one too. But the cycles per hour in a heat pump should be far less than six cycles per hour. And one is the efficiency of the heat pump changes as, you know, the reason it changes is because the pressure's got to get all right and the temperature's got to get all right before it's efficient. So, and that takes a while. But also, look at the heat pump. The heat pump is not, it virtually never, unless you're way south, is the entire heat needed for the house. We don't make them that big. You know, I'm up in the northern climes and where I'd have maybe an 80,000 BTU gas furnace, I can't even buy the residential heat pump that big. So, and I wouldn't want it if I could because it's way too big and the ductwork would be too large and just all sorts of terrible things. So you don't use it that way anyway. It's not expected to run the house down to very low temps. But what that means as far as cycling is it's not putting as many BTUs into the structure as, say, a gas furnace is. So let's take an example. I have a, a house that has, I, I do a heat loss calc, and it comes out to 80,000. Well, there's a good chance I'm going to use maybe about a three-ton pump. Now, you size them correctly, but, and, of course, their sizing is different for different parts of the country. But let's say I sized... 36,000 BTUs. Well, 36,000 BTUs is not going to heat that house at design temperature. So you'll have backup heat. But the point in this video is because it's a smaller amount of heat I'm putting in to the structure, it's going to take longer to warm it up. So this thing starts up and it's just like a very small furnace. And so it's going to take longer. So I want that thing to cycle, not six times, because it's grossly inefficient at six times. Most of its time is spent trying to get its efficiency up, and then it just shuts off. You know, sometimes it only run two or three minutes after the efficiency's up. So I'm going to want to cycle my pump maybe one and a half, two times an hour, and that. That depends. Everything, you know, kind of depends on the, on the situation and where you are and, and so on. And of course, heat pumps also put out less BTUs in the, the colder temperatures and it, than it does in warmer temperatures. So that has something to do with it too. But the cycling rate on a pump, in my opinion, shouldn't be more than one or maybe one and a half times an hour. So on heat pumps, Let's cycle them longer periods of time. I remember I used to put some of these in and I'm going, I can't even set this thing. I can't even set the thermostat for a low, lowest number of cycles that I can put in. Uh, it just, some of them I would, you know, the mechanical ones I'd take and put the, virtually disconnect the uh, anticipator, which didn't make it cycle right, but at least it cycled longer. So heat pumps, long cycles. If all you've got is three cycles per hour is the longest, I guess that's what you're stuck with. But I would say they should be longer. 